Today, we are going to be diving into the epic duel between Moff Gideon and Din Djarin. Ever since the reveal of the Darksaber in Season 1 of The Mandalorian, I knew eventually we would be seeing this blade in action. And when we finally did, although it was short, it was a feat for the eyes. The transition of the Darksaber from animation to live action is now complete. Now, traditionally, when I talk about duels or fights in Star Wars, I try to analyze the forms being used if possible, as well as discussing the emotional undercurrents fueling the duel itself. However, The Mandalorian presents a unique situation where we aren't dealing with Jedi or Force sensitivity as far as we know. Plus, the emotional center of this fight is really obvious. Din is there to rescue Grogu, and Moff Gideon just isn't too happy about it. It's just really straightforward. While it has been suggested, and even I made a video about Moff Gideon's potential for sensitivity, I also don't think it's reasonable to factor that potential into today's breakdown. Instead, we have a warrior trained from childhood versus a warlord of the Empire whose backstory we don't fully know, but at the very least, knowing he was once an officer and part of the ISB, we can conclude that he has had some formal training via the Empire itself in regards to combat. So, my aim for this video is not only to walk through the duel, but to assess Gideon's ability with the Darksaber and look for any clear indication on if he's using any actual lightsaber forms, as well as assess if Gideon could even be considered truly skilled at all. So, let's dive in. First, it's clear that Moff Gideon doesn't want to fight fair with his attempt to cut Din Djarin down after their very brief truce. If Din wasn't wearing his Beskar armor, this episode would have been the series finale of The Mandalorian. What it seems like, and of course this is my interpretation of the events, is that Moff Gideon's primary focus and approach is to overwhelm Din Djarin before there is even a chance of a fair fight, to use the fact that Din is caught off guard to his advantage. While this scene cinematically is extremely impressive showing Gideon's brute strength while he delivers 13 powerful strikes at Din Djarin. It appears more so that Moff Gideon is using that initial element of surprise with overpowering swings of the Darksaber to compensate for a potential lack of true skill. With that said, one could also argue that Moff Gideon appears to be using a basic form of Gem So, or Form 5 for the Cultured. And I mention this specifically because of his explosive attacks from overhead as well as from side to side. To more fully explain this method of attack and form, the Gemso attack stance consisted of holding the lightsaber above the head, angled back and down at about a 45 degree angle. The characteristic Gemso attack was also dubbed the Falling Avalanche, an overhand power blow that crashed down upon the opponent with exceptional force. Moff Gideon is seen to be in a high guard position, mid-guard position, as well as delivering a lot of diagonal strikes throughout the quick duel, which all visually harken back to the Gemso style. But once Gideon finishes his first wave of attack, he then goes into what looks like a Form 2 opening stance, which is a single-handed low guard. So based on this, it leads me to believe that Moff Gideon received some information about lightsaber forms in his past after acquiring the Darksaber, and was potentially self-taught. We know the Empire, and specifically the Emperor coveted Jedi artifacts, so I don't think it's unreasonable that Gideon could have gotten his hands on something outlining these various forms and their uses. Plus, as we all know, even from the actor himself, Moff Gideon wants to appear like some Vader-esque figure after the fall of the Empire, so knowing a bit about lightsaber forms would aid in that Vader-esque presence. And if this sounds insane that Moff Gideon would be able to train himself to some degree in regards to saber combat, from what I have seen in existing canon, officers, Moffs, Grand Admirals are very capable in combat. So Gideon taking hold of the Darksaber and being able to look like he knows what he is doing would also make sense based on Imperial basic training. Now, once Din Djarin gains the space he needs in this duel in order to utilize his Beskar Spear, it is very clear who the superior warrior is. There is zero doubt in my mind that this duel is meant to demonstrate this as well. Although Din and Gideon seem to be trading equal blows, I'd argue that Din Djarin is actually truly in control right here, because now he is letting Gideon just kind of slash away at him aimlessly, easily parrying all of his attacks, letting Gideon tire himself out. While the scene of Gideon cutting easily through the walls while being locked up with Din feels ominous and threatening, 
For me, it felt like Gideon was putting so much force into his forward movement that Din used that to his advantage to quickly throw Gideon off balance. Basically, Moff Gideon is only relying on brute strength, and that's the thing I keep pointing out. However, he fails to consider his defensive stances, making it easy for Din to kick out Gideon's knee while flipping over the Beskar spear into an attack position. From this point onward, it's Mando mode. Gideon does attempt to overwhelm Din once more with his overhead strikes, however, Din easily blocks all of this being fully covered in his Beskar steel. And oddly, when Moff Gideon grabs the Beskar spear that Din shoves in his direction, it actually opened up an opportunity for Moff Gideon to actually pretty much cut Din Djarin in half, but he failed to see this momentary advantage. And on the flip side, Gideon also ended up leaving his chest and midsection wide open for an attack, which Din actually takes advantage of. Gideon Gideon is kicked against the wall, while Mando moves in fast with the spear, forcing Gideon to actually grab the spear with one hand, leaving his other arm holding the Darksaber in no position to really attack. In here, Din Djarin uses the Beskar spear to get the Darksaber out of Gideon's hands. Gideon has lost. or. If you are like me and think there's a bit more to Gideon's mischievous plans, I think that once Gideon realized that he really is not going to win against Din at this point, he did the next best option that he had. Let Din win the Darksaber, forcing a future altercation between Bo-Katan and Din over who is the rightful ruler to Mandalore. So in the end, do I consider Moff Gideon to be a skilled wielder of the Darksaber? No. I think Moff Gideon has adapted previous forms of combat into his use of the saber. His combat style does seem to harken back to classic lightsaber forms, but as far as I'm concerned, Gideon's understanding of these forms in practice is superficial at best. Now, this isn't to undermine the fact that Gideon is a warrior and ruthless and willing to destroy anything in his path to power, but it's clear that in no way is Gideon as capable as Mandalorians in combat. And this also makes me believe he never won the Darksaber in combat from Bo-Katan at all, but rather let the purge occur and then stole the weapon secretly. So what do you all think about Moff Gideon's combat style and skill with the Darksaber? Are you aligned with me or do you have your own thoughts, which I would love to see down below. I think a lot of folks will argue that by merely taking on the Mandalorian demonstrates skill in and of itself, and I do agree with that. But in the end, Din still comes out on top, overpowering Gideon and accidentally becoming the rightful ruler to a planet, to Mandalore. And if we do get any more information on Gideon's backstory, I do hope we find out more about how he won the saber officially or how he stole it, as well as getting a bit more information on if he had some kind of temporary formal training with the Darksaber. So may the Force be with you, and Adat is signing off.